fishing in cold weather can be so productive and so fun, but you've got to be layered up right. You're not going to have a good time if you're over layered or under layered. Having a really good dynamic system that handles uh, thermal protection, just keeping you warm and handling perspiration, and then just the ability to move. That's really, really important. I'm going to walk you through my layering system today. It's primarily a, the kit from Squala uh, for fishing in the colder months. Today it's in the 40s and I'm going to go out and I'm going to have a great time and I'm going to share with you kind of my rundown and some thoughts on layering. So as you layer up, you, you've got several primary pieces and we'll just start with waders. Uh, there are lots of different types of waders on the market. Um, one misconception is that if you buy a thicker and heavier wader, that somehow this material is going to insulate you. Well, there may be a shred of truth to that. It's really a misconception. The Gore-Tex uh, or, you know, Torre or whatever the material happens to be doesn't really have insulating properties. Most heavy duty waders, uh, when you see if it's maybe it's something from Sims and the G4, or the G3 market, or it's the Squala RS, Generally, they just have a little bit bigger cut, like in the legs and the chest than some of the ultra light waders, just that you can get an extra layer or two in there. The other thing about waders is if you are going to be serious about fishing in cold weather, having a zipper is really nice. If, you, if you're a dude and you got to take a pee, makes everything easy, no wardrobe changes. The other thing is um, overdressing and getting a layer of sweat against your skin, like when you're hiking to the river, driving to the river, hanging out in the fly shop like we are now. You start out damp, you're probably gonna be cold. And the zipper is nice because I can open that up and try to maintain a normal body temperature so I don't get sweaty when I'm hiking down to the next run or maybe I have a section river I gotta row really hard. Now, there's another waiter here that I've been wearing and I'm really happy with. That's the Squala Carbon and that's the ultra light, uh, extremely breathable uh, material. And that helps manage your body temperature when it's really hot out just because it gets rid it gets rid of perspiration really, really easily. It's an incredibly breathable wader. For me, it just doesn't have quite a big enough cut so that when I start putting on my heavier pants and things like that to have room in there. Uh, next thing just about waders in general is boot foot waders are really, really warm um, because they keep an airspace around your foot. And depending on the model, this happens to be a Sims Freestone, they may be insulated or they may not be insulated. Um, but the boot foot is really, really nice, but it lacks that, you can't tighten it up around your foot. So if you're, if you're wading an angular boulder rock or anything's difficult, you're gonna be doing long walks. Boot foot waders are generally not preferred, but they will keep your feet very, very warm. So if you have relatively easy wading and short walks or you're in a boat quite a bit, uh, a boot foot wader is a good option. Myself, um, I just prefer a standard stocking foot option and I have boots that have a pretty big toe box so that I do maintain a little bit of loft in my socks for my toes in there. So um, I'm a stocking foot guy. I wanna be able to crank these down. Boas are nice because then I never have to retie my boots and get cold, wet hands during the day. The bow is great. That's a Corker's Devil Canyon boot. So that's just a little bit on waders. The zipper is very, very nice. Now we'll start from the bottom up and just talk about developing a good system. So regarding socks, let's just walk over to the sock area here. Uh, there's real TV. Uh, there's a, a sock from Sims. It's an over the calf sock and that's their, their thermal one. That's a little bit warmer. And uh, when it comes to socks, having an over the calf sock that goes up here, this is where you spend most of your time is waiting in this, this deep of water. So if we can double up without even long underwear, if I can double up and have over the calf socks, I'm going to be much, much warmer when I'm spending extended period of times waiting in the water. So just make sure you have a nice, tall, warm sock. Um, and I don't like two pairs of socks. Just a single sock is good. When I get two pairs, my toes get squeezed too tight. My feet get cold. As far as pants go, we want some type of synthetic or merino wool pant like I have here. I've got the merino... Um, merino or the squala merino wool pants uh, on my base layer. If it's gonna be below freezing, I'm probably gonna wear a set of long underwear and these, but these are more than adequate for fishing in 40 degree temperatures and they move really well. And having pants that have a slightly tapered calf is really nice that I don't get bunching material in there, just creating a bit of claustrophobia or frustration when I'm trying to walk around. Uh, moving on to the top, as far as base layers go, uh, some type of synthetic or wool uh, light hoodie is really nice to have. Uh, it can keep a little bit of wind off my cheeks and my face, especially if I zip it all the way up. And uh, 
having a hoodie that has kind of a built-in glove system is really nice. Uh, this is wool, so in the event this does get a little bit wet, still has some insulation properties. But one thing I like about it is when I put my jacket on, I can leave this out. And if I've got to do something like pulling an anchor rope, uh, handling a fish or doing anything where my hand gets wet, I can just ditch it, open up my hands. And so with a set of gloves, I've got to figure out where to put those, put them in my pocket, et cetera. It's just kind of a pain in the neck. And I'm all about trying to keep my, my hands free so that I can tie and do all those other good things. Um, so your waiter up, you got your waiters on. In fact, I'll just throw them on right now. We'll go through the whole system. So try not to get sweaty before you head to the river. Uh, so I think that's a really important thing. I think too many people, you know, they get dressed in the shop or get dressed at home and they crank up the heater in the car. And then all of a sudden they get to the river and they're covered in a layer of moisture. And uh, if you have a good system and you're not over layered, your, your waders and these materials that we have are meant to get rid of that perspiration, which is really important because staying dry feels good and it's going to keep you warmer. But try not to get sweaty before you go out. Don't throw all your layers on all at once. And if your layering system is done right, like I said, you'll actually have materials where these waders breathe very well. Uh, as long as we're not over layered and we're not jamming materials in there. You can wear your insulating piece. Uh, I've got this Squala uh, Fusion 3-2 Puffy, synthetic Puffy. Uh, water just kind of falls off this thing, it's great. Uh, but avoid cotton, I think that's pretty basic, but avoid gown as well. And you want some type of insulating layer. And when we have insulating layers, loft is good. We don't wanna squeeze it too much by adding too many layers. So you can wear your insulating layer over the top of your waders if you're waiting light and it's just basic. That's no problem at all. Um, you do lose access to some of your pockets and things like that. So you can wear it inside or out, um, that's up to you. If it's really cold, I will wear my insulated, uh, my insulating uh, jacket inside. So that's your basic layer and that's where I'm gonna spend most of my time, but I'm also gonna have a wading jacket uh, in reserve too. So maybe it gets wet, gets a little windy, or I just need to take the edge off. Uh, a wading jacket, if you're wading when it's cold, is just a really good tool to have anyways, because it may save a day of fishing. Uh, if I fall in, this wading jacket comes in really, really handy. So I can choose, I can add both layers here, uh, or I can just add this layer here. Uh, if I'm wading in technical water, and I want to be safe and protect myself, and I'll explain why. So if we take a wading jacket, and uh, can't zip it all the way up because I got a microphone hiding in there somewhere. Hopefully it's still working. Uh, but if I zip this thing all the way up and I use this jacket properly, and uh, I'm gonna show you what I mean by that. So in here, there's a, there's a secondary uh, gasket, if you will, and I can take and I can tighten this up and that's gonna be almost waterproof right here. And that's not attached to the outside jacket, which is kind of cool. So I can tighten this one up and I can move it back in here like so. And then this, I just make it a very comfortable amount. But now when I move my arm, if this is tight, I can't move my arm around at all, really. It's just gonna pull on the entire sleeve. So I can set that up right so that water can't come down in my sleeves, whether it's raining. And fly fishing is unique because even in the rain, we often have our hands up and we're trying to create kind of a rain gutter down into our, our body. So. It's important that we're cinched up right here in the rain, but more so if I have my, uh, my pass-through pocket zipped up, I'm pretty much waterproof here uh, and I can cinch up the bottom like so, so I'm pretty tight on the waist. If I were to fall in, it's very, very difficult. Say I just fall and take a little drink. Maybe I fall and catch myself with my arm and instead of the water coming all the way down into my waders, now I'm just a little bit damp, my ego's a little bit bruised, but I'm still fishing for the remainder of the day. Wading jackets are amazing when used properly. If you fall in, they can save a day of fishing, potentially save your life because you actually stay pretty buoyant when you have a wading jacket on. Uh, one more thing, just about the kind of the Squala jacket. There's really cool pass-through uh, pockets right here. I mentioned this on the Squala RS way to review as well, but now I can get my hands right in here against my body, um, which will actually warm my hands, which I think is important. And I can also get into all of my technical pockets. So I've got tackle in here that I can get to. And if I'm getting hot and I'm afraid that I'm gonna get a little layer of sweat going, I can open up and I can cool off a little bit by opening that up. If I'm getting really, really warm, 
open up the front of the waders, open up the sides. Maybe I'm hiking to the next spot and I don't want to get overheated. Uh, I can do that as well. Um, and then uh, regarding hats, always like to have a bill on my hat. My vision is improved. It's much, much better. Just throw a stocking cap on top of your hat. And that's another really great way to really quickly cool down so that again, we don't get too, too sweaty. So uh, that's just a rundown on my layering system. Mimic it, copy it. There's products in the video description, but I would recommend before you go out, like try your gear on and be critical of it and make sure that it fits and it works really good together so that you can move your arms. Uh, you could hike, you can move and you can do all that fishy stuff. Uh, and then the last thing is a couple of tips. If you do find yourself getting a little chilly out there, it's okay to reel in and just go for a short walk. Just stay moving, go pick out the next piece of water. Just a little walk, even a few hundred yards will often get that blood moving again before you lose circulation, your toes and hands, and you're not having any fun.